Let's say these machines represent your game out there somewhere. It generally runs fine, but sometimes a bug will smash your game into pieces. Without software monitoring, this purple robot is you, surrounded by darkness. You read comments and negative feedback saying that your game is full of bugs and crashes. It's pretty hard to locate the crashes and understand what bugs cause them. With software monitoring, it's like turning on the lights and suddenly you see what's happening. Bugs will still break your game, but you get notifications and reports from all these exceptions. You even get a trail of breadcrumbs leading up to the exception, so you can track down the bug. And Unity has got its own cloud diagnostics crash and exception reporting, that's a pretty long name, and we use that when we released Line War to capture some very essential crashes and bugs. And in this video we're going to be having a look at another tool called Sentry, which is a software monitoring tool that is helping developers to find and fix code related issues. The guys at Sentry contacted me and they're sponsoring this video so I can help them spread the word that you can use Sentry to monitor your Unity games as well. And I'll be able to show you Sentry in action today and also show you how it can benefit you when you release your game so you can make it a huge success. And trust me, there will be bugs, there will be exceptions and there will be crashes in your game. So your game will crash and this could be a way to stay ahead of the game. So let's get started. This video is split up into three sections. First, I'll be showing you why you will be using software monitoring and the superpowers it gives you. Second, we'll have a look at how to set up Sentry for your game project and get you started. Third, we'll compare how Sentry stacks up against Unity's crash and exception reporting. Why should you or will you use software monitoring in your game? Your game will throw exceptions when more players begin to play. It could be because their hardware is different or missing support for a feature, or because they performed an action in your game that's causing a bug. With Sentry, you have a dashboard for your game and all the issues from broken code that players encounter will automatically appear. You can click on the issue and get useful information. You see when it happened? Tags that you can click on to filter. Maybe this bug only happens on Windows 11 or on Nvidia graphics cards. You see the type of error with stack trace so you can see which script and what line of code caused the exception. Remember the breadcrumbs leading up to the bug that caused a crash? You'll find them here too and it includes useful things like Unity debug log events and scene changes. This works for production releases too, not just development builds. There's a built-in experimental AI feature that can analyze the issue and give you recommendations and for a change it actually has a sense of humor and a bit of a disclaimer. Crashes and exceptions in Unity games are often related to null references. Maybe you tried to access an object that was destroyed or maybe you tried to access a component that was never added for a game object to begin with. In other cases, crashes may occur because of hardware and software differences. At the bottom of the issue, you give detailed information about the device, time zone, culture settings, GPU, shader level support, operating system, Unity itself, assemblies, and you can set up so screenshots are automatically attached. This information will help you narrow down bugs that are caused due to device and software differences, which can be a pain on PCs and mobile devices because they're also different with different components from different manufacturers. Maybe your game assumes shader 5.0 support or a certain amount of video memory. Maybe you use compute shaders that are not supported by the graphics card, or your texture atlas resolution is too high for the device. This information helps you understand the bug, why it occurs, and how to fix it. At the top of the issue, you can go directly to the attachment, or to the tags, so you can see the number of occurrences for each tag, and they are clickable so you can filter by tag. If you're working in a team, you can assign the issue to a team member. You can archive the issue, or set it as resolved in a particular release. As you push out updates of your game, you can see the number of occurrences reduce over time. In addition to issues with software monitoring, you can also gather user feedback, track performance, receive alerts and configure dashboards. Now let's have a look at how to set up Sentry for your game. Go to Sentry.io and sign in. You can create an account with a password or use Google, GitHub or Azure DevOps to sign in. Click on New Organization and then set your organization name pick a data storage location, agree to the terms, and then set your email updates. And continue. Once you've signed in, go to Create Project and click on Unity. You can decide an alert frequency and set a project name. Then it's time to make the Unity integration. I made this little platformer game for this video. It's a good candidate for software monitoring because I'm sure it'll contain a bunch of bugs. Go to assetstore.unity.com slash packages slash tools slash integrations slash sentry dash 
127333 or click on the link in the description and add the free Sentry asset to your assets. In Unity and when your project is loaded, go to Window, Package Manager, My Assets. Locate the Sentry asset and download it. Then import the asset into your project. Once imported, you now have a Tools option at the top menu. Click on Tools, Sentry. You can use the wizard to connect your organization and project that you created earlier, or you can set it up manually. When you use the wizard, it will log in through the browser, and you can select from the projects that you created on Sentry.io. You can decide if you want to go to the options, or if you're fine with the defaults. If we do look at the options, the important part is the DSN, which identifies the project that you're connected to. You might also want to go to Enrichment and click to attach screenshot. Now let's test it out. I'll create a new game object in the root of the scene and name it Sentry Test. Let's also create a new C-sharp script and we'll call that Sentry Test. In the start method of this mono behavior, I'll write Sentry SDK dot capture message and then in brackets and quotation marks, we'll put hello from the game. The using Sentry statement might be included automatically at the top if you're using a recent version of Visual Studio, otherwise you'll have to write that manually. I'll save the script and in Unity we'll drag the script onto the newly created game object. I also want this test message to include a screenshot, so I will go to Tools, Sentry, Enrichment and tick Attach Screenshot. Now I'll run the game, wait for a few seconds and then stop it again. In the project on the website now, we have a new issue. I'll click on All Issues and we can see Hello from the game. If I click on the issue, we get some more details the message itself and the breadcrumbs leading up to it being sent, which isn't many in this case. Below we see specifications of my computer and that I couldn't afford a GTX RTX 4090. At the bottom we'll find a link to the attached screenshot, so let's preview a bit. Ok, so we can send messages from the game that could be useful to notify yourself under certain conditions if you need to collect information under certain conditions. That's a lot of conditions. But what about exceptions and actual bugs? Well, let's also make it a little bit credible. Let's say when the hero's health is zero or below, I want to instantiate a tombstone at the player's location. In my script playerstats.cs, where I keep track of health, and this will be a bit of a dirty spawn of a tombstone from a health property, but sometimes you have to do quick and dirty stuff so you can regret and fix it later. So if health is less or equal to zero, then we want to instantiate the tombstone prefab at the position of transform.position and with quaternion.identity. I press control period while hovering over the tombstone prefab and select generate variable. We need to change this to game object instead so we can reference the prefab. And we need to expose it so we can configure it in the inspector with serialize field. You can also change it to public, but serializing a private field is the preferred way to do it so it's not visible in any external code. Perfect, let's play. I play like a noob and die and instead of a tombstone we get an error. Unassigned reference exception. We also get a bit of a funky behavior in the game because after you hit broken code you cannot rely on anything working properly from that point onwards. Now we'll refresh the issues on the web and here we see the Unity Engine dot unassigned reference exception. If we click on it we can also see a stack trace leading up to the event. In the update method then the apply damage method and then setting the health property. In this game you'll die all the time so it's easy to spot and fix the issue but imagine if that tombstone only appeared if you died by a reaper enemy on a Halloween weekend. The error would rarely occur and you would not know about it unless you used software monitoring. It's also important to know that the user has no idea what's supposed to happen. All they see is that the character is sliding around in weird ways when it dies. The screenshot that we configured to be included can also be helpful to give you an idea of what's happening. Let's fix this by jumping onto Copilot and generating a sprite for the tombstone. Then I use Krita to cut it out and save it as a PNG file and then import it into Unity and create a 2D game object with a tombstone sprite, save it as a prefab and reference the tombstone prefab. And let's play again. Now the error is gone. The most common error of all in Unity games are probably null reference exceptions. They are similar to unassigned reference exceptions but with less clear information. In the start method let's add transform t equals null. And then we'll put some log entries. We'll do debug log. Let's test the, the most common exception of them all. We'll do a debug log warning, brace yourself. And a debug log error, pull up, pull up. And then we'll do debug log t.position. Here we're actually trying to access that transform. That's null at this point. So we cannot really read the position of it. 
We of course get the error and now on the web we can go to the null reference exception we see the script and line of code where it occurred and the breadcrumbs that are neatly presented with severity level and colors. Now let's build the game and try it out. Unity logs to a local text file in app data slash local low slash company slash project. In the local Unity log files, you get the null reference exception and you also see the debug log entries, but you don't get the log level such as information, warning and error. With Sentry, not only is the information automatically collected and submitted, but it's also more neatly presented, easier to read and it contains more detailed information. You can also add your own custom context and tags. For example, if we add int play count equals player prefs dot has key, play count, and then a question mark here, number one, colon, otherwise, player prefs dot get int play count. So we're setting play count to either one if it's never been set before, or we're getting it from the registry. Then we do player prefs dot set int play count, and then we'll increase the play count by one. And then we'll do sentry SDK configure scope, and we'll set the scope to scope dot set tag play count and then if play count is less than 5 we'll set the span to 0 to 4, if the play count is less than 10 we'll do 5 to 9 and if the play count is less than 50 we'll do 10 to 49, otherwise we'll just set that value to 50 plus. We get a new tag available for exceptions or captured messages which includes a time span of how many rounds a player has played the game. You can also add context and maybe an unconventional use would be to track when someone completes the game to give you an idea of how long it took what the inventory was like or how many times the player died. This can be done by creating a custom class with properties and setting that scope. And by the way, it has to be properties, it cannot be fields. For example, we'll do class game completed details. We'll do a public string difficulty. We'll do a string time taken and we'll do an integer for attempts and we'll do an integer for score. And then we can do sentry SDK dot configure scope and we'll set the scope to scope dot context and we'll add that into game completed details and we'll create a new game completed details class and we'll set difficulty to hard time taken to 42 minutes and 30 seconds attempts 124 and score 590,400. these are just example figures of course you will collect this from the game itself instead now this might not be broken code but you can use it to track significant events in your game and attach a screenshot and rich system data Another feature in the web interface is that you can toggle between Unity Editor and Production Environment if you want to focus on events that are happening in your game builds. Okay, but what about crashes? Well, we'll try that too. Let's add utils.forcecrash and in brackets here we'll do force crash category dot fatal error. This is a handy way to test crashes without actually trying to figure out some funky code that will corrupt your memory and break your machine. So you can actually use these little helpers to help crash your game, believe it or not. But let's put it before the null reference so it actually gets executed. If you build a game and run it now, it crashes as expected and in the Sentry dashboard we can see the crash and get information about it. This is a very powerful tool so you can see when your game crashes, how many times it's happening and hopefully give you an idea of what is causing it. This is a huge advantage compared to just receiving an email saying Meh, the game is crashed. You can also catch exceptions and add more contextual information or user-provided feedback. In this example, I will throw and catch an access violation exception and present a user with a feedback form that allows the user to add information related to the exception. This script is shared by multiple entities, so I will ensure it only runs once for the hero player. So we'll do if gameobject.name.contains hero, then we'll try and we'll throw new access violation exception. And we'll catch this and we'll make a reference to the exception with ex and then we'll put var event id equals sentry sdk dot capture exception and we'll reference that ex variable and then this is a custom part here where i do find any object by type and it's going to be this sentry feedback type and then in brackets i'll put find objects inactive dot include so we'll include in active objects because the feedback form is currently inactive and then we'll do dot show feedback and then we'll pass the event ID. And this sentry feedback is a mono behavior that I created earlier and it has a public method called show feedback. And the important part in here is when the send button has been clicked, we call this function and this one calls sentry SDK dot capture user feedback. And then we'll pass the sentry ID so it can be attached to that particular event that's already been logged by either a capture exception or if maybe we've sent some user feedback and then we'll also pass the email and feedback and I'll grab that from the text input fields of the email input and the feedback input. 
We can see now in the web interface that when we click on the exception and then we can click on the user feedback tab, we have additional information provided by the user. And this does not necessarily have to be because of an exception. You can actually use this as a feedback form, maybe during beta testing or as a suggestion form. Unity's crash and exceptions reporting has a similar feature as well. Okay, so finally then, how does Sentry stack up against Unity's cloud diagnostics crash and exception reporting, except for being a lot shorter in the name, well, Unity's solution is integrated in Unity and Unity Cloud, and it works great out of the box. Like Sentry, you can see when exceptions and crashes occurred, when the last occurrence was, and you can click on them to get more details. You get similar capabilities to show the stack trace, system information, and metadata that contains information about the hardware and software. I think the big differentiator is that Sentry has more advanced filtering, customization, and wide platform support. Both Sentry and Unity crash and exception reporting have free and paid tiers, where the paid tiers for Unity is included with your subscription generally. Sentry's developer tier is free and you get 5,000 monthly errors, 1 GB of attachments and 30 days retention. Unity Personal, which is free, comes with free cloud diagnostics, which includes 25 daily crash and exception reports and 10 daily user-generated reports which is about 1,000 per month if we're gonna compare apples with apples, and 10 megabytes of storage with seven day retention. Sentry have a team tier currently priced at $26 per month, which bumps it up to 50,000 hours and 90 days retention. Unity Pro and Enterprise, if you're paying for any of those, includes 10,000 daily crash and exception reports and 1,000 daily user generated reports, which maxes out at 330,000 reports, if we're gonna compare apples with apples per month, with 90 days retention. And Sentry also have business and enterprise tiers for larger data amounts and features. You might wanna just check these numbers out again. Maybe they've changed since I created this video. So you can check out for Sentry and for Unity and just make your own comparison what the stats and data is. If you're using Unity Pro and above, the built-in crash and exception reporting albeit having less filtering and operational features, might be a good choice. However, if you want the cross-platform benefit and also monitoring network servers, websites, APIs and other components from the same dashboard, Sentry has extensive platform support and superior filtering and management capabilities. If you're also working with different game engines, Sentry has support for Unreal Engine 2. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope it gave you a good insight to what software monitoring can do for you and for your game. And if you want to play this little game that I created, then you can go to the link in the description and see if you can beat my high score, which I'll also put in the description. And uh, my Patreon tier on uh, patreon.com slash Infensia can download this Unity project as well if you want to have a play around with it and see the code and all, everything, how it works. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in a video shortly again. Until next time, have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye for now.